Hi all, this video is just a quick reminder about five prime and three prime ends of DNA. We haven't seen this um, in a few weeks now. So I thought I would just draw you a quick little picture about what that means. So when we're talking about DNA nucleotides, we are talking about our sugar. So here's our little sugar. Our sugar is gonna have a extra CH2 on it, and then we'll have a phosphate group. This sugar is also gonna have an OH group here and this OH group is gonna participate in bonding with the phosphate group of the next nucleotide in line. So I'm gonna draw the full phosphate group here, even though one of the oxygens from the phosphate group is already drawn out there. This is just how I draw it. So here's our other CH2 and our next sugar. So this sugar, I'm not gonna have bound to another nucleotide, so it's gonna have a free alcohol group, an OH at the end of it. So when we're labeling this, we say that this is the five prime end because this here is the five prime carbon. And this is the three prime end because this here is the three prime carbon. One, two, three, four, five. So our three prime end is gonna have a hydroxyl group that's not bound to another nucleotide. Our five prime end is gonna have a, a phosphate group that's not bound to another nucleotide. Now, you may notice that this is just the sugar and phosphate, but there's another piece of DNA, or piece two DNA nucleotides, and those are the nitrogenous bases. And so those are right here. So, so here's a nitrogenous base. They're fancier than this. I'm drawing a very simplified version of them. So there's the nitrogenous base. Now I wanna think about the other side of this strand of DNA. Uh, it's not much of a strand, it's just two nucleotides long. Just please imagine for me a much longer strand. So the other side of this strand of DNA, we're going to have hydrogen bonding between complementary nitrogenous bases. So the hydrogen bonding, this one's going to be a pyrimidine here. It's going to be to a purine. And who knows if I can draw this, I might be able to. Oh yeah, okay, here we go, no problem. There we go. <laughs> so there is my very nice looking purine. So this is our purine ring. This one's also going to be hydrogen bound to a purine since it's a pyrimidine. Hmm, this one's a little bit dicier looking, but you kind of get the picture, I hope. So the hydrogen bonding that's happening is gonna be happening between these nitrogenous bases. Now this is hydrogen bonding, not covalent bonding. So this is gonna be easier to melt apart from each other than these bonds. These bonds would have to be hydrolyzed apart from each other for covalent bonds. So these nitrogenous bases are gonna be hooked up to um, their own nucleotides over on this side, but the orientation five prime to three prime is gonna be different between the two strands. So that this one is gonna have bound to the one prime carbon. I'm not good at drawing these upside down. I'm used to drawing them in one direction. Here's gonna be our three prime OH group over here. And then over here, we're gonna have our five prime carbon bound to a phosphate group. So same thing for this one here. It's gonna have the OH group on the three prime carbon, and then a CH2 and a phosphate group. So this is going to be the five prime end, and this is going to be the three prime end. So note that these are anti-parallel. The five prime end is on the same end for this strand as the three prime end is for this strand. So that's what we mean when we say that DNA is anti-parallel in its double-stranded form.